I'm Serena Fazana. Thank you so much for joining us. Boy, do we have a special on the record today. I cannot believe this. Coming in from L.A., DJ Robbie drums himself. Woo! I'm, <laughs> I'm so excited you're I'm here, with, Robbie. I'm with Serena. Oh, my gosh. See, I think, ooh, can you do that again? Damn, even on the table. Even on the table. You, you, got, you, you got the beat. I, got, I should. <laughs> at, this should. Point, at this point, let's hope so. <laughs> It would be terrible if I didn't. <laughs> okay, let's let's talk about you first. And let's talk... Uh, Definitely, first, let's okay, talk about me. Let's talk about you first. All about me. Yeah. Um, uh, How do I look first? Yeah, you look yeah. great. He had to go and get his hair all fixed, by the way. It, it's a production, <laughs> this thing. You know. I love it. All right. So, clearly, you're a DJ. Give us that background first. So, um, I'm a drummer, DJ. And I'm like the original guy that started drumming and DJing together first. Or at least I claim that. <laughs> I claim that in front of everyone. And drummer, I mean, seriously, very, very huge. I shouldn't have just said DJ because, I mean, you're no, drums. No, 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 no. Okay, yeah, I yeah. drum and DJ. So I created this thing called Live Remixing. Mm -hmm. And uh, lots of magazines say I started it. Ooh, that's good. Like, yeah, and, um, yeah, modesty aside, dude, come on. Would yes, you tell yes, us? I'm telling you. <laughs> okay. so, um, so I DJ and drum live, and I created this... Uh, uh, the, this contraption called the Dream Screen. It's a transparent touch control that I developed with NASA scientists. Okay, so. NASA scientists. Yes, real NASA scientists. <laughs> uh, that is my good Indian part. <laughs> no, I've been a bad Indian with crazy hair my whole life. <laughs> do something good. <laughs> I, don't, do, don't do idiot all the time, jumping around. <laughs> Monkey boy. Anyway, uh, that's my mom, and she really thinks I'm monkey boy that jumps around and does nothing. Oh, kidding. So I developed this transparent touch controller for Paula Abdul's TV show, Live to Dance. So I was her musical director on CBS, and it's a crazy no. story. Okay, wait. On CBS during that whole... Oh, no, no. That's a different story. Never mind. <laughs> well, I'm, yeah, I'm getting off Wait, what, what story, story was that? I'm thinking the Janet Jackson, right? Well, no, which, which, well it, 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 I'm getting off track. But anyway, Paula Abdul, CBS. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so... Um, I was flying down to Brazil, mm -hmm. and I was doing a show there, and I watched Minority Report. And we had uh, the greatest designer on the planet. I mean, he'd done Pink Floyd since 1976. And he is the leader of everything, all the technology, and all the everything that happens in, sh in shows now is directly related because of him. And we just had a production meeting the day before, and I'm like, <laughs> You're the, you're the production manager for Pink Floyd? I was like floored. I was like completely awestruck. The president of CBS was there. I could care less. I was so into, into Mark. And uh, How old were you at this time? Uh, was this like uh, out of college? I mean, no, pretty no, young? No, it was like 10 years ago. Like 10 years ago. Okay, yeah. okay, got it. Okay. So I was old then. Now I'm just even older. <laughs> no, no, you and me both. Now so. I'm one foot in the grave. Um, <laughs> so at that point, and... You know, he guy can do anything. And Paul was like, we're going to make you like a satellite stage and we'll go this and that. We're going to do all these crazy wild things. And, you know, he's got all this technology and LED floors and all this stuff before anybody else had it. And uh, I watched um, Minority Report and then I landed. I'm like, I text Paul. I'm like, you know, we should have Mark create a... Uh, transparent touch controller or something a big glass screen that i dj on you know like let's even if we're not doing it for real let's do it and so then i go and i'm staying at copacabana palace right on copacabana beach i'm like this is great i want to drink some beers and go look at beautiful brazilian <laughs> models on the beach and just enjoy it you know some and then paula keeps texting me and i'm like man it's like eight dollars a minute i didn't have a long distance plan i'm like this is expensive for me i mean i can afford it now but then i'm like oh man this is gonna be like a 32 two dollar call if i cut it off in four minutes right right and then she calls me like 20 times and i'm like man i go it's eight bucks a minute to call you and she She's like, I'll pay for the call. Just call me. I'm like, okay, fine. She's like, Ravi, they love it. I'm like, who loves what? She goes, 
I was with the president of CBS last night for two and a half hours in his office, and they love the screen and the whole thing you're going to do. I said, well, well, that's great. I said, that's just an idea. Can Mark make this? She goes, no, you told me you made it. I said, oh I didn't God. say I made it. I said, we should make this. We should have Mark make this. <laughs> no, you told me you made it. I'm like, I did not say I made this. I'm on a plane. Like, I just landed at the beach. I'm trying to drink a beer and go to the beach. I didn't make anything. Well, you're going to get fired from the best gig you never had, and everyone in the city is going to know. I'm like, whoa, oh, man, I'm trying to go to the beach gosh. here. Like, and uh, she is the nicest, sweetest, mm -hmm. kindest woman, but I stressed her out in that moment. She's like, I sold you for two and a half hours in the president of CBS's office. So what did you do? I mean, did you even have the she money goes, to make the screen? No, she, yeah. goes, she goes, dude, you better make it happen. And that was it. So what did you do? I made it happen. Okay, how did you get the money and how did it? No, like, no, like, no, how no. Did so it, so okay. um, I was the musical director for... Howie Mandel's TV show. So fortunately, I had a little bit of money at this time. It all went away with the invention of this stupid screen. No, it wasn't stupid. It's no, the screen is it's, amazing. It's pretty amazing. It is so cool. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I was just like, oh my gosh, there has to be people using touch controllers and projection, and, and there has to be a way to image map onto this. And so then, I, I just started looking it up and there was all these manufacturers in Europe that were doing displays and all this. I'm like, we could take a display and create a whole new thing and this, that, the other. So then after that, I had another gig in um, Norway, mm -hmm. in Stavanger, Norway. <laughs> and, uh, and I met this guy Bjorn and he took us out drinking mm -hmm. after the gig and there was this whole thing. But then I landed, I, I found these guys that were doing something similar. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I found them online, and it was like the future of DJing and this whole thing. I'm like, that's it. So I contacted them, spending eight dollars a minute calling <laughs> nonstop. Eight dollars a minute. Eight dollars a minute. It was killing it from time. from Rio, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I didn't have it. <laughs> so I call them and I get them on board, and I call Paul. I'm like, okay, I found these guys are manufacturing it. So then we have CBS write letters to get their visas, right? And <laughs> So I'm like, this is going to be epic. I'll be a billionaire, you know, in the next two years. I'm like, this is going to be on TV. Uh, I got an exit strategy. I'm like, I'm like, Dude, I'm Tony Robbins, right? And uh, I'm like, Tony Robbins this. And so then I get it all going, and they're writing letters, official letters to the U.S. government, applying for their visas and all that. And then I go to Norway, and then I fly back, and it's a long flight. I have like a 10-hour layover in Frankfurt mm -hmm. or something. And I land, and my wife picks me up, and she's like, hey, did you get your emails? I'm like, no, no, I'll check them later. Let's just eat. And, you know, we're at the Grove and we're going to our favorite little Greek spot. Mm -hmm. She's like, you should check. You didn't check your email. I'm like, no, I just landed an hour ago. What is everybody hitting me all the time for? Just leave me alone. I'm like, I want a break. Give me I, a break. I'm trying to have a beer over there. I'm trying to have a shot of who's over here. Like, nobody's let me drink. And, uh, and then she's like, you should really check your emails. I'm like, wow. I haven't seen you in two weeks. And, you know, the kids are yeah. like, I'll keep the kid here. You, you go check your emails. So Bjorn... The guy that was going to make the uh, screens for me. No, oh, sorry, that's a later in the story. The guy <laughs> say, hey, we can't do it. I'm like, what do you mean you can't do it? And they're in Chile. And I call them, I'm like, in Chile. I'm like, what do you mean you can't do it? I just had, you know, the people that produce American Idol write letters to get you over here to put this on TV. I'm having heart palpitations right now just thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> and I just landed after like a, you know, a flight from Norway with the 10 hour layover in Frankfurt. And I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, we can't do it. We just signed an NDA. And this is like, I've been processing this. I was just on a flight for 12 hours. Like, what the, how could everything change? Well, they sent us money and we can't do it now. I'm like, oh my God. So I come back defeated. And she already, my wife's got a couple shots for me. She's like, I know you're going to need these. And uh, she goes, oh, just, you'll figure it out. And so then I, I call, I like just Google every place that's manufacturing any of this mm -hmm. stuff. And I, uh, I reach a guy named Bjorn. Mm -hmm. And, oh no, he's one of the 30 calls. And, and I just partied with Bjorn, some other Bjorn. I guess every, half the people in Norway are Bjorn, right? Bjorn. Or, or Ragnarok or whatever. <laughs> Ragnar, you know, everybody in Vikings. One of those Viking names. Mm -hmm. anyway. So this, um, I call all these people, 911, email everybody, a giant opportunity. Yeah, yeah, producers of American Idol, blah, 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 blah the whole bit. And uh, so a guy calls me at, like, I remember it was 5.42 in the morning. Cause I my phone up, and I remember this. He goes, hey, it's Bjorn. I'm like, oh, Bjorn, thank you. That was great, <laughs> taking us out to drinks. But it's 5, you know, 44 in the morning. I'm exhausted. Can I call you in a day or two? He goes, no, no. You called about a TV show, 911. You have a screen and all this <laughs> other stuff. I'm like, hold on. Who is this? 
He goes, yes, you emailed me. I'm like, I'm sorry, give me a second. Stay on the phone. So I went and made a double espresso. And I'm like, okay, let's get into this. And so lo and behold, this is like a Thursday or Wednesday or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's like, I'm, we're developing screens like that. I got two ex-NASA scientists mm -hmm. and we have a shop in Houston, Texas. Are you going to Texas anytime soon? I'm like, oh my God. I'm going to Houston for the first time in 10 years on Tuesday. No way. Yeah. So oh, no, wait, no way. Like the, the universe, was, the the universe, universe was coming burned. together. You know Commercial. I totally believe in all that stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. my. Okay, so then what happens? I'm like, you're kidding me. He goes, no, we have a showroom. We can do this. These guys are masters of touch and this, that, the other. So I call them and uh, my buddy Ron Kerr, Don Kerr, and then uh, I go there and they show me how they can do it and I scratch it out on a on a napkin and we start developing it together and we started a company for a moment called Dream Screen Labs where we started developing my dream screen mm -hmm. and then um and then we did the TV show and and uh, now I've been using this dream screen there it is right there oh my gosh, for the last uh, so you know, decades cool. yeah okay so let me ask cuz we're going to did you always have the hair no <laughs> like 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 when did this when did the, when did the hair come about I've always had cool hair. You've always had cool hair. But, I'm, not, uh, I'm not saying that you haven't had cool no, hair. No, I always but... wanted a mohawk. And then, mm -hmm. uh, and then um, I, th I think my wife was like, man, just get it. You always wanted one. Just do it. Why, why on the fence? So then I had a faux hawk for a minute. I'm like, dude, this is so halfway in the middle of the road. Nobody <laughs> likes anybody in the middle of the road. Come in. Go all the way in or not. Go home. You know? So then I got a mohawk and then that was it. Well, because it's kind of... That's part of my trademark. Right. Again. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's what I wanted to say, that it's part of your, your trademark. I'm like slashing the hat, just like way poorer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you're not at all. So I'm really excited. We're not there yet, but... The second half of the show, what's happening? Because you're releasing. Ah, I have an exciting new record called Love is the Answer. It's coming out on Friday, October 8th. And um, if you're in L.A., we're doing a big party at the Doheny Room, which is like one of the hottest spots on the planet, you know, right there on Sunset. Mm -hmm. and impossible to get in and, you know, the whole bit. Mm -hmm. um, Super LA fabulous. <laughs> oh yes. yes, oh yes. And I'll be in the middle of the fabulosity. <laughs> and trust me, I have been at some of your parties, and they are a blast. They're fun, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. everybody's raging, and <laughs> yeah. it's a lot of fun. You're celebrating music, and mm -hmm. you know it is the great connector. So I got this record. I did it with my friend Steve the Wreck, and uh, we've got this beautiful lyric video. I think we're going to play for you guys in a second. But it's all about you know. Lo I mean, love is the answer, right? There's so much hate in the world, and gr the great thing about music is it unites and brings all of the world together. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, green, or how you identify, whatever it is you're doing, whatever lane you're in, great music resonates with everybody, you know? And it can change everything. And if you think of, through the history of time, mm -hmm. right, the peak of every celebration was, you know, brought together, glued together, unified together with music. Whether it was at a church, at a Baptist church, or whether it was singing happy birthday to a mm -hmm. kid, or whether it was, you know, playing a great song at a wedding, or whatever, like, the, or the graduation, or a president walking <laughs> on stage, whatever it is, you know, like, or, you know, a great military leader, or whatever, even the Dalai Lama with yeah. the chance. So, like, I think music is the glue. And, you know, one of the commonalities that bring all of humanity together. So. Well, absolutely. And you are talking to the girl, right, who's in love with love, as you know. Yeah. I mean, I am. I'm so, I am so in love with love. Well, let's go to a break. And then when we come back love, after love. the rev, we love love. So you love squared? Oh, my gosh. I love, I mean, I love, I've set up eight couples that have gotten married. In fact, it you could be. You set up eight couples yes, that have gotten married? In fact, there could be nine. Mm -hmm. Really? They just showed me so, their... So you're an, you're an Indian matchmaker? I am. <laughs> I am. And I love that accent. <laughs> All right, we're, we're going to come right back and we're going to play Rob's and, and, uh, and, uh, You can spin the dial and if you call in <laughs> the right callers, she'll set you up and you can yeah. get married. There you go. That's fantastic. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. I'm Serena Fazan, a journalist, producer, and podcast host. With the background in television news, I know how much time and talent it takes to produce a broadcast quality production, but no more. Red House Streaming offers a simple, cost-effective method for capturing live action and streaming it in real time to YouTube, Facebook, or any other website. From single camera shoots or multi-camera productions, conventional 
of virtual sets. And from the state-of-the-art Red House Streaming Studios to remote locations, the professional crew at Red House Streaming, backed by the technology and reputation of CP Communications, allows you to produce more content at a lower cost and with little to no engineering required. That's why my podcast, On the Record with Serena Fazan, is streamed live from the Red House Streaming Studios each week. Contact Red House Streaming today at 800-762-4254 or online at cpcoms.com to learn more. I'll see you in the studio. Okay, we're having way too much fun. Yes, I'm here with, as we should. Oh, yeah, always, right? Yeah. Isn't that what life's about? Yes. Yes, I'm here with DJ Robbie Drums. Of course I'm here with DJ Robbie Drums, who has a very... I'm so excited because you're releasing... This is breaking news. That, breaking news. <laughs> this is breaking news. Do your thing again with it. <laughs> breaking news. You're releasing your new song on my show. Yeah. And the name of the song again. <laughs> Love is the answer. Love is the answer. All right, so let's play Love is the answer. Let's play it. Get the lyric video. Roll it. You are amazing. Thank you. I love all the energy. Okay, so tell us about the song. So Steve the Wreck yep. that actually sings it, but you wrote the lyrics. I wrote it's the lyrics and produced the track. He and I did it together. You know, he's an incredible talent, keyboard player, singer, 
and uh, we just put it together. Well, what is your favorite part? I mean, do you do you love to write and then create the music bed? What, just what do you think? all of it. You know, like I mean, I'm a I'm addicted to creation. Mm -hmm. you know, creation is salvation, right? So, just creating anything, you know, that that the whole creative process to me, every bit of it, whether you're like building a garden in your backyard or or you're you know, renovating. I just renovated a house, so that's why I'm talking about that. But uh, just writing songs or producing songs is really, really, really incredible. I just did a thing for um, the Men's World Cup U.S. soccer team. I did the sound design on it, and that oh, was really, really, really fun. Oh, how cool was that? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. And I'm pitching a song to the Bucks. We'll see what happens with that. Yes. Hopefully, uh, went to Cuba and... and um, I have a travel series called Off the Beaten Track. So we went to Cuba, went to India, went to Galapagos, and uh, maybe we'll go to Beer Can Island. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? But uh, just creating. You know? Well, sp speaking of Off the Beaten Track, I yes. want to stop just for a minute because we want to show a little bit of the clip, yeah. at least, for Off the Beaten Track. It's so amazingly produced as well. It's so fun. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So I direct and produce and whatever. Whatever's necessary is <laughs> what I do. I, I develop technology, you know. <laughs> what do you mean? I got it. I, I could cut my own hair maybe. I don't know. There we go. Well, we're going to pause this for a minute so we can watch that. Hi, I'm Ravi Drums, a musician, DJ, and technologist. I pioneered the live remix and developed technology with NASA scientists. I've been fortunate in my career to travel the globe and perform on some of the biggest stages on Earth. But really, I'm a collector. Some people collect action figures, posters, and comic books. I collect and generate once-in-a-lifetime experiences around the globe. We're going to grab local influencers, disruptors, creators, musicians, chefs, artists, poets, anyone pushing humanity forward. Every street corner, performance space, art studio, and restaurant has unique traditions and stories told through the music and food. And we're here to collect and celebrate every last one of them. Let's go. Whether we're at Diddy's Coachella Bash, jamming with Post Malone, a basketball court in the slums of Havana, having the greatest roast pork in the jungles of Cuba, paying like us at the palace in India, or champagne with the prince and princess at the Monaco Grand Prix. Let's do this! Wherever you are, music, food, and technology are the three great connectors that unite all of humanity. The flavors and rhythms are as complex and interesting as the stories that naturally unfold. And we're there to celebrate every last bit of it. Experience exotic cultures, locations, innovations, food, music, and art. In this time of division, we need to come together more than ever and push humanity forward. It's our cultural uniqueness that makes us so special. Join us as where the ancient and the future collide. This is Off the Beaten Track. Robbie, that video also amazing, and I love the concept of everything off the beaten track. How do you choose the places you go to? Well, you know, it's some place that I want to be really connected to, or some place I'm really, really interested in. So, Gumbi Ortiz, who you know was my partner in this uh, on that episode, <clears throat> he was the main featured guest, if you will, and um, you know, me and him wrote all these songs together. So. Gumbi was, you know, he's from here, from Tampa. If you're in Tampa, then you probably know Gumbi, one of the greatest congueros on the planet. <laughs> I mean, played with everyone you could ever imagine. And he's, like, always been my musical mentor. And um, so I played a lot of Cuban music when I lived here in Tampa with him. Mm -hmm. It was kind of this voodoo hip-hop thing. It was, like, Cuban Latin jazz, but then this hip-hop rock element. It was really wild. It was like a jam band before they... Uh, before they really hit, if we could have gotten organized, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but um, so a friend of mine posted on Facebook, yeah, she just went to Cuba. I'm like, how did you go to Cuba? Nobody can go there. She goes, yeah, you can. And flights are super cheap right now. I'm like, no way. She told me how cheap the flights were. I'm like, that's it, I'm going. And I want to go shoot because I wanted, I had this song called Cuba, Cuba Freedom, mm -hmm. and I, it was awesome. Me and Gumbi did it. And um, I wanted to go there and find some other elements, some rappers, get some real flavors from there, and then document it. And 
we ended up going down there and uh, we hooked up with Carlito Iraragori, who is Celia Cruz's musical director. And Gumi's like, man, I got the cat. I got the guy. I just did his son's record and this, that, the other. And he's the guy down there. And we'll go to Trinidad, Cuba. I'm like, I've never even heard of Trinidad, Cuba. So where Havana is, right, if Cuba's like, like this, mm -hmm. here's, here's Havana, there's Santiago, um, Trinidad is down here in the southern part, and it's this old folkloric area. So the old area, it's, it was actually founded in 1545, and it still functions at the roads of these cobblestone streets. So it's like you're traveling in time, and it's so historical, and the sounds are a little bit sweeter and more folkloric, and more, they're more melodic. Mm -hmm. And uh, they all play the tres there, which is like a Cuban guitar. And uh, it's just, magical right when you imagine visit like going back in time to an ancient cuba mm -hmm. that would be it it's not havana but havana was incredible because we met with met up with horacio hernandez multi grammy winner one of the greatest drummers in the world and um we saw god the greatest rumba band on the planet i i'm at a loss for their name right now uh Ason Asian, Asian de Moin. Oh, I'm I think, very I'm, I think I'm saying it incorrectly. Pretty, but you know, it sounds good, so it's okay. And we played everything from like on a basketball court, which felt like a 1970s hip hop video, you know, like when, mm -hmm. when the hip hop battles were all happening on basketball courts in the Bronx and Harlem. It felt like that. And then we're playing there in this beautiful fairy tale area of Trinidad. And then I took those tracks. And this is a wild thing. Mm -hmm. We ended up just wanting to get one. We ended up doing a whole EP because uh, the inspiration was so thick. And we got, and Carlito was, he's the king in, of mm -hmm. Trinidad. And he got all the best musicians there. And we rented a, uh, an Airbnb there. Mm -hmm. And we all crashed there and, and just had every musician in town come through. And we ended up jamming and recorded four records. So Damn. it was absolute, five actually, five. Um, it was absolutely mind-blowingly inspiring. And then two weeks later, I went to the Monaco Grand Prix mm -hmm. and I played Cuba Cuba Freedom at the Monaco Grand Prix for the Prince and Princess of Monte Carlo. It oh was just gosh. wild. Oh my gosh, you've had the, the most amazing experiences. What about you create the track for On the Record? Let's do it. Really? Yeah. Did you guys hear that? He said, On the Record, you would create my track? On the Record, like, I said I'd create the track for On the Record. You will? Because we don't have an open yet. Really? Like my open, yeah. You, you, you really will? You need, you need a track. If you'll do it. This, I think we can work this out. Okay, this is, I mean, you're really. Yeah. Okay, I think I'm in shock right now, so I can't even speak. <laughs> the person who speaks all the time is speechless. That's good. <laughs> and I, I want you to come back and do Off the Beaten Track at um, 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 the beach. Let's go. You know, we, we need to do that. That and would be a really fun episode. Yeah, on Beer Can Island. On Beer Can Island. Let's, let's go. Um, all right. I'm like, you know, tapping you for all this stuff. The, the incredible executive producer here was mentioning that. <laughs> let's see if we can put it together. Yes, absolutely. Lowell Beckner, who's Lowell. a gentleman. Lowell. We love Lowell. All right. All right. So, I wasn't sure if you called him Mr. Beckner or yes, Lowell. Yes, well, yes. I would like to call him Mr. Beckner. But Mr. You know, Beckner. Mr. Beckner. He's, Mr. The potential Beckner. opportunity of a rager on Beer Can Island. Island. Yes, it will be so much fun. I'm sorry. I'm still trying to focus because I'm still so excited about like the on the record potential track. We should do on the record, off the record, off the beaten track at uh, Beer Can Island. Oh my gosh. Okay. That'd be great. All right. So before we close out, you've also been in movies. Yeah. <laughs> you know, which it, are, are those really your own acrobatics though? Like, you know, when you're like performing, is that really you or is that a stunt person? No, no, no. That's me. <laughs> Just ask my ankles every morning. <laughs> You know what I wanted to do this week? I just read in the newspaper that Tom, because I read, uh, I mean, if you live in Tampa and if you haven't read TB12 and you do anything mm -hmm. athletic, uh, you should. You know, the oh my goat, gosh, the, the goat, Tom the goat Brady, himself. of course. Have you, have you read his book, TB12? I have not read his book you yet. You should read it. Okay. It's really good. That's very, it's a very easy read. I have such ADD. I have no concentration. But it's amazing. And he just talks about his discipline, his eating habits, his, and his aqua consumption. I mean, his water consumption. <laughs> this man is serious about his water. Well, we should drink some yeah, more water. Well, I'm, I'm, you're, not, you're, you're I'm almost trying, out. I'm trying to get my... <laughs> There it is. Lowe's going to be angry. With Mr. Beckner. Mr. Mr. Beckner. <laughs> Mr. <is> gonna... Beckner. <laughs> Mr. Beckner, do you have a cleanup crew for the great Selena? Um, anyway, so uh, his book is, is amazing, and I've been reading it and trying to get my water game together and uh, just get my life together, you know, because wouldn't we all want to be like more like Brady? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Absolutely. 100%. What would Tom do? <laughs> yeah, what, exactly. What would Tom do? Anyway, so... Um, he has a TB12 gym here now. 
That's awesome. Yeah. <coughs> we'll have to check that out for sure. Oh my gosh, I'm dying to go. Like, I don't even know how hard it is if you can even get in or whatever. But I'm going to check it out because I think I'm going to come back at, at uh, Thanksgiving. And if so, I want to have them, uh, you know, work yeah. on me. Yes, and plus, you know, there could be. You mentioned it earlier in the show, but there could be some major breaking news with the Bucks and you. And there could be. Let's hope so. Let's hope let's so. Let's hope by the time this airs, there is. Yes, absolutely. And we, of course, will keep you posted on that. Robbie, for people who want to follow you, um, where should they go and how should they find you? <clears throat> DJ Robbie drums everywhere, just on Instagram. I'm mainly on Instagram. I'm a little bit lazy these days on Facebook and trying to get that TikTok thing back up and going. It's oh too many. There's too many things you got to do. You know, ah, it. but... Most importantly, most importantly, Spotify. Ravi Drums on Spotify. Love is the answer. Everyone, do me a favor. Please, the song is free on Spotify. Just get it and put it on repeat and play it all weekend so I can trick the algorithm and oh. I can get playlisted. Yes. Absolutely. I need all of your help, every one of you. Absolutely. We'd love to do that for you. And thank you so much for coming on the record with me, Robbie. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>